Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my first impressions reaction of Ya Boy Kung Ming. That is literally what the series is called, and it is hilarious that that's the name of the series. Uh, this is a first impressions uh, reaction. I decided, yeah, you're, you're seeing this as the second one today slash this week. I decided to do two this week, simply because there's no one piece this week, sort of like as a little extra something. Um, so we're doing a second one this week, kind of to replace One Piece as well. This series was not what I was originally going to do for that, though. Um, I was originally going to do something else, but I decided on this because today, Rough Senpai uploaded a video to his channel uh, of his reaction to the opening. And I watched it. Well, it was the opening and ending, but... And the opening is like, okay, I need to check out this series. <laughs> it, it's that interesting. Um, I don't know what this series is otherwise. Like, I don't think I've heard anyone mention it or whatnot. Um, though I do have a very, very, very tiny basic knowledge of who I think the character is supposed to be. At least who they may be. Because the opening makes it seem like there's this character who's like this kind of this ancient uh, Chinese character brought to like more modern day. Um, and I know, I, I don't know like all the details about the person, the real life historical figure, but there was a, a real life historical figure, a military strategist named Kong Ming. A Chinese military strategist who's been compared to Sun Tzu. That's actually mostly how I know about him because I've heard the I've heard people make that comparison. I've heard people talk about that when I've heard people talk about Sun Tzu. And mind you, I don't even know everything about Sun Tzu or the art of war either. But still, <laughs> um, so I've heard this historical figure mentioned before. And based on the opening, it looks like that might be what this is. Uh, a, a his, it's one of those anime where a historical figure is somehow transported into modern day. It, it's not the only anime that has done this kind of thing. I, I think there's, I think there's a couple of them where they've done that with uh, Oda Nobunaga. I think there might be a couple of them. Weirdly enough, I know there's at least one where a person is transported back into ancient Japan and becomes Oda Nobunaga which is interesting. Um, but yeah, the opening is very fun. It's, it's, it's very party-like, like the music and the dancing in it is very like club party style. Um, and it just looks like a lot of fun. I don't know what the anime is actually about based on the opening. It might have something to do with the music scene but I don't know if the opening is actually telling us what's what the anime is about or um, like what to expect really because some openings are just kind of random or some openings are very high energy and don't really tell you anything like the Death Parade opening uh, Death Parade's opening it shows the characters dancing and doing like fun poses and stuff it doesn't tell you anything about what the anime is actually about. You would not be able to guess it from the opening. <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this uh, opening is another one of those that is just kind of random fun for the sake of having random fun. Or if it actually is telling us. Um, but that is what it appears to be. And based off the name, that is what I'm thinking it's going to be. Those are just my first impressions based off of the opening, because that's all I've seen of this. 
Um, I didn't even see any information when getting the episode because I avoided doing so because I want to go into this blind since I can. Uh, just like I did with the other one from today, uh, Requiem of the Rose King. Uh, I went into that pretty much completely blind as well. So, yeah, this one I have a little more to work off of just because I have seen the opening, but I am interested. Um, because these kinds of anime, uh, they can be kind of hit or miss. So it's just, I don't know how it's going to end up being. This could end up being really good. It could also end up not being really good. <laughs> Who knows? We'll have to watch to find out. So, yeah. Uh, we're going to get to this and hope for the best. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. There has been quite a few um, first impressions reactions lately, where mostly, mainly just with anime, mind you, that have really impressed me right off the bat. Obviously, you have Jujutsu Kaisen, but you also have My Dress Up Darling and Spy Family. All three of those first impressions. Uh, reactions. I, I think I said reviews before. All three of those first impressions reactions really impressed me with the first episode and hooked me in. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen with its uh, bleach inspirations, very clear, and the likable characters, the great action, the interesting premise. My Dress Up Darling, again, likable characters, relatable uh, issues and mindsets that the characters are going through, phenomenal visuals. Um, and then Spy Family with just being an absolute treat. Just loving the characters, the concepts, the ideas, and the connections that the characters are making with each other. Um, plus, honestly, Anya is just fucking adorable. Um, and now we have this. And it's just like... I... I, <laughs> I just... The, the one problem with keeping doing these... Uh, first impressions reactions is that I keep having to put more stuff on my list of things to, that I, I have to get back to reacting to in the future. And that, cause now, cause now we have this and yeah, it's, it's pretty obvious that I loved this. Um, I don't know if the reaction itself showed how much I loved it though, but this was really damn good. Like I would actually, and this might be an unpopular opinion. I liked this first episode. It, it was a stronger first impression for me. Uh, it, it, bleh, bleh, bleh. it was a better first impression for me than Spy Family was. And Spy Family was great. It was a great first impression. Very much excited to continue that in the future. Um, but this, this impressed me. And I think... Part of the reason is that I connected with a certain scene in it, and a, basically Iko's backstory. It, it, I almost cried. I, I, again, I don't know how evident it was for you watching the reaction, but I was fighting back tears at that, at that because I connected with it. The depression, the suicidal tendencies and attempts, and... Although, for me, it wasn't music, being saved by witnessing something that changed my life. For me, it was something as simple as My Little Pony and animation. And it, it just, it changed me in a lot of ways and helped me want to continue going on. For Iko, it was music. Hearing the singer from America in the club that night... It gave her the will and desire to continue on, to follow her own dreams, 
to move people in the way that she was moved. And for me, for me, it wasn't quite as exciting as that. It's like, I just, I just found something to latch on to that kept me from wanting to give up on myself in this world, basically. It's not a goal of wanting to help others feel what I felt necessarily. But it's just something that I connected to that I, I just, that just kind of like grabbed hold of me and won't let me feel quite that, that down again. And there have been moments where I'll still get really down and really depressed because that kind of thing doesn't just go away. And I'm sure the same would happen to Aiko. She even said in this she was planning on giving up, that all these failures she kept having, all of these failed auditions were getting down on her and she was planning on giving up on her dream. And so it's like, yeah, it's like these, these issues are still going to happen. They're still going to come. And that that is what sold me on this because of my personal connection with it and just it it it, it nearly broke me i've managed to hold on i managed to keep myself from like really breaking down but it it really did get to me and um then we have the fish out of water story with this because that's kind of what a big portion of this series is. On his deathbed, Kong Ming wished to be reborn into a world without war. And that it ends up becoming true when he is reborn into the current world. Now, mind you, current day, there's still war. Like, we have a war literally going on right now between Russia and Ukraine. And it's horrific, the kind of stuff I've heard about what's going on over there. So war does still exist in the current day. It's just not as common as it was in Kong Ming's time. Uh, but Kong Ming wakes up, just literally wakes up into this world. And at first thinks it's hell because it's loud. There's people wearing, because it's Halloween when he wakes up. There's people wearing Halloween costumes, so they look like skeletons and devils and shit. And there, it's just, it's super loud. There's a lot of loud music blaring, and he, he thinks it's hell. He ends up going into this club and um, ends up uh, getting really drunk, <laughs> but also hearing Aiko perform. He hears her perform on the stage, um, and falls in love with her voice amongst all the cacophonous noise that he's surrounded with that is overwhelming him. Her singing is absolutely stunningly beautiful to him. And again, as I said in the reaction, like the singing voice in this is phenomenally beautiful. Uh, I, I don't know who's doing her singing voice, obviously, but she's got a gorgeous voice <laughs> um she ends up helping him the next morning seeing him drunk on the street and brings him back to her place where he reveals who he is to her and realizes where he actually is that he's 1800 years into the future and has no idea what anything is. <laughs> the scene where he's trying to figure out what everything is is funny. Like just going from one thing to another. It's like, what's this? It, 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 there's a fire. The water's on fire. You got to put it out. It's like, that's a humidifier. <laughs> it's like, just all the things that they go through. And then the, there's that final thing, whatever he was messing around with. He's like, I don't actually know what that is. <laughs> Um, but it, it was a really funny scene. There's some really good comedy here. Um, and, and then Kong Ming hears her sing again and everything, and he's just completely enamored by her voice. 
uh, she agrees to help him get a job at her place. She talks to her boss, and he ends up being a huge uh, uh, nerd, a huge, a massive nerd of that time period. So he he questions Kong Ming about uh, his past and about his actions. Kong Ming gives him the answers. He's like, "Oh yeah, no, this is definitely the dude." <laughs> And he's like, you, you have to wear what you're wearing right now. You can't wear anything else. <laughs> it's just, it's really funny that this dude is just, just accepts him right away because he knows all that history and stuff. While obviously Ico didn't. Um, but he ends up getting a job. He starts working as a bartender and is really good at it. <laughs> because apparently he... Excuse me. Apparently he had some strong... Um, knowledge of tea brewing and stuff which he says was a lot more difficult than mixing drinks and all plus as i stated probably his, the fact that he has such a sharp mind um at being a military strategist and everything and even especially being compared to sun tzu means that he probably has a pretty sharp memory too so when he's learning all these different recipes for all these different drinks he's probably memorizing them and knowing exactly how to make them perfectly. <laughs> so it, that's probably why we see he does such an amazing job. So after another night at the club, um, with him now working there, he and Aiko talk, he learns about her backstory and everything, and then basically offers to become her manager. Um, and she accepts. He acknowledges that he's her fan. He tells her that he uh, really values her music and that it's kind of given him a new lease on life in a way. And it does mean a lot to her because of how much of a dream this is for her. So she takes him up on the offer and that's where the first episode ends. Um, it's a really strong first episode. It endears us to its characters really quickly. Um, Kung Ming himself is really funny, but also a nice guy. Like, I don't know, like, what the real Kung Ming was like. So I don't know how accurate this would be in terms of just his personality or and strength of character. Obviously, it's not going to be 100% for a lot of reasons. But still... I wonder if the real Kung Ming was known for being a good, like, just genuine person like that. Um, but either way, whether that is true or not, the Kung Ming we got here is exceptionally likable. He's smart, he's funny, uh, I love the fish out of water stuff with him, but I also love how encouraging and just kind he is. Just the amount of, like, utter praise he gives to Aiko is absolutely beautiful to see. And Aiko herself is exceptionally likable. Uh, she's this young adult who is just trying to make her dreams come true because she was moved so heavily by music and now she wants to do the same for others. And she's, outside of her extremely cute design and... and her impeccable fashion sense. Um, she's a really likable character. She's just instantly really nice, really kind, really helpful. You see her uh, strength of character when she just ends up helping Kong Ming without even really needing to, or without really worrying about how safe that would be. <laughs> like, you see this drunk dude on the streets who... Um, who came up to you randomly in the bar and started praising you the night before. It's like, my first thought would not be to take that guy home with me where I live alone. Like, my first thought would be, I'm going to avoid the shit out of this situation because this could lead to bad places. <laughs> um, she shows that she's just a really good person, maybe even to a fault. I wonder if that'll come up. Um, but that she is willing to do what she can to help people. 
and that might come a bit from her own past and her own issues uh, maybe she just doesn't like seeing people that way herself or in any kind of negative situation I don't know um, but she definitely has a good heart to her she she's very nice like she finds out he doesn't have a job she's instantly like okay I'll take you to my place let's talk to talk to my boss let's see if we can get you a job she didn't need to do that she could have like given him a help wanted uh, section in a paper in a newspaper and just let him go at it but her first thought instantly let's let's take you to my place let's see if my boss will hire you I'll recommend you it's like she did not need to do that it is so nice <laughs> um, and again the 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 backstory and stuff to just connecting with that also you know endears me to any character who I happen to have anything in common with um, that's always a way to endear someone to a character to make them relatable and definitely had that with Aiko here um, the visuals are great too um, it, it's it's a visually great anime it's not like the best I've seen honestly I would say dress up darling is more polished looking um, but this is still very good and the one thing that I'm really excited for about like I mentioned in the reaction the music like I said you guys know how much I loved Carol on Tuesday's music I, I, I'm a big fan of great music in anime and, and not just background soundtrack stuff but actually in world in character singing um carol tuesday did this phenomenally because you know it's a series about music and a lot of other series have had great music in it in that regard too but i feel like a series like this is just bound to really hit that nail on the head in a way that few others manage to this could easily be up there with Carol Tuesday though maybe not quite on the same level of memorability for its songs and lyrics and all for me at least but definitely up there um I really really like this uh and yeah we will obviously be getting to more of this in the future um but just another another series to react to put onto the list um, I'm wondering if I should actually make a slot specifically for things I've done first impressions for. I feel like that wouldn't really entirely make sense and it would kind of limit things a bit though. Um, but with as many as I've done now and with as many as that I, I am continuing on, I almost kind of like feel like it wouldn't be completely out of the question to do something like that. <laughs> Um, but no, no, I, I think I'll just uh, keep it as it is. Um, but it is interesting to see like some of these just like really hit it out of the park for me. Um, and some of them maybe not as much, but still excite me to continue. That's kind of what today's, uh, this week's first impressions reactions have been. One, it's like, okay, I'm very much interested to see what happens next, but not quite invested. And then this one, I'm very invested. <laughs> I am in on this series. So, yeah. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, tell me what your thoughts are on the first episode of Ya Boy Kung Ming. And, yeah, hopefully you're as excited to see more of this as I am. We will continue to check it out in the near future. Um, for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.